This game is probably one of the longest running games I have played on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, this is Monarch. If you were expecting a 5 minute game, look elsewhere. Monarch can be described as a story driven turn based RPG that delivers lots of dialogues, occultism, parallel worlds, in combination with something reminiscent of high school drama. In this review I discuss basic aspects of the game and how it's perceived on the Nintendo Switch. This video may contain spoilers. Feel free to subscribe to my channel for upcoming reviews and other content, all connected to Nintendo Switch. With that said, let's check out Monarch. In this game you play as, well, yourself. At least you have the opportunity to do so. And my name fits in well, right? You notice how big fog has settled over the academy you are studying at. The mist causes people to go crazy. Students who commit murderous acts and who experience various forms of trauma. In addition, it seems like you can't escape. Everybody is trapped in the mist. Of course, your task is to investigate the mystique surrounding the academy. Can you restore everything as it once was? In the story, you meet people who use their power to implement insane plans and ideas. But also people who help one along the way. With friends, you put together teams that fight against the forces of evil and do different quests. I must say that the narrative is extremely comprehensive. In true RPG spirit, it's the story that drives the game forward, but it also requires that it's captivating and interesting. And it is, most of the time, but it's important to be patient. It took a long time before things really started to happen, to understand what is going on and to get an overall picture of the situation. Which people can you trust and who are your enemies? Those who seem to want to help you may in fact be ready to kill you. But the game contains extremely many cutscenes with long conversations. This means that the narrative can sometimes feel a little bit drawn out. I think the game would have benefited from removing some dialogues, shorten it but retain the core of the story. At the same time, there is a certain tension. Sometimes it got really dramatic and I felt invested in what happened. It's as if all dialogues and cutscenes build up to a climax. We live in new times, and in this game, digitalization is a vital part of the course of events. Forget the old classic system where you randomly end up in battle by moving your troops. Instead, you use your smartphone to fight. However, you have to be careful. Sometimes the phone rings completely unexpectedly, and if you answer the call, an extremely difficult battle awaits that can lead to your death. However, you can find different numbers that unlock new battle zones. They are usually adapted to your level, but can have a varied degree of difficulty. The game's combat system is turn based. Most often you participate in teams with a partner and some friendly demons. I really like the game's combat system, not only because the fights can be really challenging, but also because they are often linked to the story and what is happening around. It's important to be strategic, think about how to position your men, which spells do the most damage and which enemies are to be prioritized first. Unfortunately, it's a little bit monotonous because you basically meet different skeletons. I would have liked a greater variety, however the skeletons have different strengths. Some heal, others place nasty debuffs, while some are strong and do physical damage. First, I usually eliminate the skeletons that give debuffs. Nothing is worse than being understaffed because you were charmed or affected by a sleeping spell. One mechanic I really like is defer. It means that your teammate can give another teammate an extra time to attack or move. This is extremely effective if you want to use certain spells several times in a row. In addition, it's fun to see how much damage you do. Some people like numbers, I guess I'm one of them. If you spend too much time time in the mist or use certain spells, you can become 100% mad. This means that in combat you become uncontrollable. You fight against everything and everyone, this is quite dangerous, you can lose a battle because of this. Of course, there is also a skill tree that can strengthen your troops. It works a little differently because you reach a new level in connection with buying a skill. You get no experience points by killing enemies, but only points for which you can then buy skills. This system works especially well when you want to level up a new character. It's just to win a few fights, collect some points and buy lots of skills for your inexperienced body. That way, all characters can become playable quickly. One thing I think is a bit of a shame is that you have no gear, stats only. Most of the time I think it's an interesting part of an RPG that character development is seen by finding different forms of equipment that can be useful and make one stronger. However, the developers have chosen to do it in a different way. In the game you unlock different demons that help you fight. 
they can be equipped with something called vessels, that is, armor-like objects such as helmets, chests and leg armor. It's certainly quite fun to find good gear and be able to strengthen different demons, they can be really useful in battle. But it feels like there will be an imbalance, as if demons is more important than the game's protagonists. You have your skills, you can become really strong, but compared to demons, you have no gear to play with. However, there is a unique ecosystem that is exclusive to your character. By eliminating certain enemies or answering tricky questions, you can increase your ego. This is quite important because a big ego makes you unlock new gear. A big ego also allows you to obtain crystals that strengthen your stats. This is a fun aspect of the game. You usually see different crystals that are scattered around the academy, but you can only interact with these if you have a sufficiently high ego. The ego system also leads to a certain exploration to return to old places and find new crystals. I like it. This game contains some puzzles that can be really entertaining. Some are quite cryptic and require you to look for information, examine different places or find clues. Sometimes you have to find keys or help someone to be able to move on, but the clues you get can be vague which I think is good. You have to think for yourself and have to try different methods to find the right answer or the right solution. I also think that the challenges are well balanced. They will definitely be more difficult over time, but if you understand the basic structure of the game, it can help you understand how to solve the puzzles. The game's graphics are experienced from a three-dimensional perspective, but most often the camera is fixed, which means that you can't see everywhere. For example, outdoors. You can basically just rotate the camera left and right, not up and down. A bit of a shame actually, because it feels like the world is getting smaller. I would really like to have a look around, but the opportunity doesn't exist. The environments are also a bit boring actually, a bit empty, it doesn't look so alive. Check the water, it's completely still. Here you would like to see an animation, however I like to run around in environments surrounded by the mist. It looks good and gives a feeling that something isn't right. A mysterious and almost a little creepy feeling actually. The NPCs you interact with also give a monotonous impression mostly because they are perceived as copies of each other. Sure, you are in a school environment and everyone has a school uniform, but most are the same length, the same thickness and have the same clothes. Usually it's only the gender, the glasses or the hairstyles that differ. Some variation wouldn't hurt. Something that is typical of RPG games are many and varied menus. Do you think Monarch contains any menus? Yes, and very many. But I must say that it is very easy to navigate. I press the X button and everything you need to know about the game comes up. There is a to-do list, a map, your smartphone, characters, items, libraries that contain lots of memos and notes, achievements, profiles that contain information about everyone you meet in the game. And everything is gathered in one place. I really like the menus. You have a lot of use for them and here the developers have succeeded well. Easy to navigate and find. This is good. A Monarch is a comprehensive game that you hardly get through in one night. Well, if you do, then I'm curious how you did it. But in my playthrough, it took several days. It contains so many different parts that take hours to get through. Everything from developing characters to experiencing the game's story. It takes time and it's worth it. If you are in a hurry and want to play games that are completed in 5 minutes, then Monarch is probably not for you. For example, you have to go through long cutscenes that require time. Of course, you can skip all dialogue but why would you do that? The point of the game is its narrative. This is an RPG, right? I alternated between playing both handheld and docked, and I didn't perceive that there were any major problems. No crashes or slowdowns. Some smaller cutscenes were a bit laggy, but considering the size of the game, I don't see it as a big problem really. As a whole, it's a solid experience. There is the opportunity to choose between English or Japanese language, and here I am really impressed. The voice actors have done an excellent job of bringing life to the game's various characters. It makes it feel real that the people express themselves in ways that you can empathize and sympathize with. The best in my opinion is the combat. If you like turn-based fight, then this might be worth checking out. I like that the challenges had different degrees of difficulty where you sometimes had to think through your moves to win. How to move your troops, which spells to use and which enemies to kill first. It's fun and something I keep coming back to. I could spend hours fighting. I like it. I highly recommend Monarch, especially if you like Japanese RP games with lots of cutscenes, puzzles and turn-based combats. But be prepared that this game can be a long and grind heavy experience. Please subscribe to my channel for more upcoming reviews and other content. Have a nice day, bye!